You would think that after the incredible miracles of the ten plagues and the splitting of the sea, that there would have been a long line of people from the nations of the world wanting to convert to Judaism to join the Jewish people. And yet, the grand total of such people ended up being one guy, Yisro, Jethro, the father-in-law of Moses, Moshe. And he didn't just convert, he gets this week's total portion named after him, Parshas Yisro. And he introduces an entirely new judicial system after he criticizes his son-in-law, Moshe, and tells him, what are you doing? Spending your entire day adjudicating cases and teaching people the law? You need to defer. You need to delegate. You need to set up judges below you. And Moshe takes his advice and institutes that system. But Yisro doesn't just spring on the scene now in this week's Torah portion. He had previously demonstrated a rare combination of compassion and sensitivity. The Talmud tells us that he was one of the three most trusted advisors of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was looking for those advisors to be yes-men, to rubber stamp his vicious plan to drown the Jewish baby boys in the Nile. Bilam, our mortal enemy, said, Great idea, boss. Kill the Jewish babies. Eov, Job, was silent. Yisro, the third advisor, emphatically disagreed. And as a result, he had to flee Egypt. He had to run away to escape Pharaoh's wrath. He made it to Midian, where he became the high priest of Midian. But he was a searcher, a seeker. He tried out every one of the world's religions, but found all of them wanting. And so he turned in his proverbial gun and badge and renounced his position of the high priest of Midian. And although he was still fabulously wealthy, he was shunned by his countrymen. And that's why the shepherds were terrorizing his daughters at the well, when none other than Moshe showed up as a fugitive in Midian, after also having to flee Pharaoh's wrath. He stared down those shepherds, helped those young ladies water their flocks, and then he disappeared. Now, I wasn't there. I never saw any video clips. But it does seem from that story and others that Moshe was awfully powerful, not the kind of guy with whom you'd want to pick a fight. Kind of like John Wayne. Or Bane. Or Fozzie Bear. Okay, maybe not Fozzie Bear. In any event, he was certainly a strong guy. But what happens next is what's really fascinating. Yisro's daughters come home, and Yisro says to them, Ladies, how'd you make it home so fast? They say, oh, an Egyptian man helped us at the well. He says, where is he? Go find him and invite him over for a meal. Let him break bread with us. And the commentaries say that that was a euphemism. What Yisro meant was, ladies, go find him. And if you're lucky, maybe he'll marry one of you. Now, I have two daughters. And if they ever ask my advice someday to when looking for a husband to help them find one, I know where I'm not going to look. As wonderful as their hairstyles and beards and physiques are, I'm not going to be searching for a husband for my daughters amongst the offensive linemen of the Philadelphia Eagles. So what was it that piqued Yisro's interest in Moshe as a potential son-in-law? Moshe's brawn? His strength alone? No. There was something much more going on. What he was telling his daughters was, ladies, you didn't realize it, but you had a brush with greatness at that well. You see, even though I'm no longer the high priest of Midian, I'm still the wealthiest person in the community. And anyone who shows up here for even five minutes finds out who I am and who you are. And no one, no one would do you a favor without leaving a calling card, leaving an email address, a cell phone number, so that I can get in touch with him later, to offer him a reward or a job or both. And yet, that's just what your mysterious Egyptian did. He wasn't just strong, and he wasn't just brave. He's also humble and unassuming. And that, ladies, is an incredibly difficult combination to find. He is husband material. Go find him. And so when Yisro gets word of the miracles that God has done in Egypt, he's ready. He realizes that's the God for whom I've been searching all these years. The one God, the true God. Sign me up. I'm converting. And so maybe we can take some cues while trying to develop our compassion and sensitivity from the convert par excellence, Yisrael. Mm -hmm.